Trust. This is where it gets more interesting. And if I if I say something wrong here, Brian's going to correct me. He's with the Trust Department of Bank of America. Um, first point: it doesn't completely <coughs> replace a will, and we'll sum up a little bit at the end. But you should still have a will in place, even if you create a trust. And when we talk about trust, it sort of is a corollary to a corporation or an LLC or a partnership. A trust is a separate legal person. It's not a real person. Nobody necessarily is represented by that trust in particular. But that trust becomes a separate legal entity, and it can do things. It can own property. It can receive payments. It can make payments. It can make purchases. It can make sales. And it's all done by representatives of the trust. And the trust has a trustee, normally that's appointed, sometimes an alternative or secondary successor trustee, somebody who steps in if the first trustee can't serve. And then a trust has beneficiaries. And that's kind of the moving parts of a trust. It's a legal person. It's got a name, normally like the trust of so-and-so dated such and such. Um, and then it has these abilities to do things. So a trust is a place where you can park assets in advance of debt and then predict and control down to the tightest detail how the assets within that trust are going to be managed, how the assets within that trust are going to be invested. You can specify, it, as long as you care to pay an attorney to draft paragraphs, you can, you can lock that trust down to do any number of things. There's trusts that are dedicated to charitable causes. There are trusts that are dedicated to getting kids through college. There are trusts that exist for all kinds of purposes. So, any trust fund kids? Oh, uh, don't answer that. <laughs>